Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to calculate NDVI or Normalized Difference Vegetation Index using QGIS. Now, NDVI is a widely used index that uh, helps us understand vegetation health and coverage by analyzing satellite imagery. And it stands for Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, which is nothing but a numerical indicator that uses a few specific bands of satellite imagery to basically assess the health of vegetation, which means identify areas where healthy vegetation is thriving and identify areas where vegetation happens to be under stress. Well, before we get to that, let's have a quick look at the electromagnetic spectrum, which some of you might be familiar with. And as you can see right over here, over here on the left hand side, what we have is basically electromagnetic waves that have high energy and high frequency but shorter wavelengths such as gamma rays. And if you go to the right hand side, you can see that we have electromagnetic waves such as microwaves and radio waves which would have longer wavelengths but lower frequency and lower energy. And right around here you can see that we have the visible spectrum which I think most of us are quite familiar with again, because this is basically the range of wavelengths that we as humans can see from our own eyes. And if I try to zoom into this part of the electromagnetic spectrum, which is going to look uh, something like this, and this is nothing but an expanded version of the visible spectrum where you can see the individual colors and the corresponding uh, ranges of wavelengths in nanometers. So when you're looking at the colors individually, you can see that red basically lies on the right hand side which gives us the indication that it has slightly longer wavelengths compared to a color like violet which is at the opposite end of the spectrum and these are basically the colors or the electromagnetic waves that we can see from our own eyes and if you jump over to the other side from this red range what we get is basically the near infrared zone of wavelengths and this is something that we cannot see from our eyes but as we have already established, just because we cannot see something, it doesn't mean that it doesn't really exist in the universe. Good examples are radio waves and microwaves, which you cannot see, but they're still there. And if you think about a satellite that scans Earth and acquires photographs of the Earth, what they're actually capturing is the light that's reflected off of the Earth's surface. And that light is basically nothing but all different sorts of wavelengths as you can see right over here and some of them might include wavelengths from the visible spectrum such as blue green and red and it also captures wavelengths from outside the visible spectrum that we cannot really see from our own eyes such as the near infrared zone and if you look at the list of spectral bands corresponding to a mission like Landsat for example and see exactly what sort of information they are collecting you can see that in addition to a number of different things, a couple of different bands like visible blue band, visible green band, visible red band, as well as near infrared band, which happen to have these different uh, wavelength ranges, are actually among the light that's being captured by these Landsat 9 instruments. And even when you go ahead and download satellite imagery data set, let's say from Landsat, it does not come as just one single image. You're going to get a bunch of different things that would typically look like this. And the numbers that you're seeing right over here are not just basically random numbers. For example, at the beginning, you'll see the corresponding Landsat mission. These are Landsat 9 images. And right around here, you'll see typically the dates during which this particular set of images were acquired. And towards the end, what you would see is basically the corresponding band. The same set of information that you can see right over here on the right hand side. So this file right over here, which says B3, would actually correspond to this visible green band, which captures the light with wavelengths within this range, 0.53 to 0.59 micrometers. And by the way, I have done a very comprehensive tutorial explaining the process of downloading Landsat imagery for free, along with an explanation of what these uh, different files are. You might want to check that out uh, if you're interested in downloading your own datasets. And yes, what I was saying is that when you download satellite imagery from Landsat, you'll get this kind of a bunch of different images corresponding to different spectral bands. And when it comes to calculating the NDVI, 
This is the relationship uh, that you need to be aware of. As it says right over here, NDVI equals to NIR, which stands for near infrared minus red divided by near infrared plus red. And the entire reason why I wanted to go through that process of explaining to you guys the visible spectrum and the fact that satellites like Landsat, they just capture just a subset of different wavelengths for different reasons. And, and those wavelengths include these three bands of the visible spectrum, which is blue, green, and red. And at the same time, it includes this near infrared band as well. And when you look at this equation, you can see that in order to calculate NDVI, what we actually need is just two different sets of information. We need the near infrared band and we need the red band, which is band 5, that's the near infrared band, and band 4, which is the red band, according to the set of bands that correspond to Landsat 9. Now, if you're talking about another mission like Landsat 7, then the number of, then just the ordering of the bands might be different, but all you need to remember is that you need to find the corresponding band which captures the near infrared wavelength range and the band that corresponds to the wavelength range of the red color in the visible spectrum. And if you want to be a bit more specific now that we know that we are definitely going to use Landsat 9 imagery for this uh, NDVI calculation, you could even go a step further and sort of uh, rearrange this equation and say that when using Landsat 9 imagery, NDVI can simply be calculated if you minus out band 4 from band 5 and the entire thing divided by band 5 plus band 4. Why? Because when using Landsat 9 imagery, band 5 happens to be the near infrared band and band 4 happens to be the red band, as you can see right over here. And guys, the NDVI values vary between plus 1 and minus 1. So once you perform this calculation, you're going to get values that are actually within this range. And before we jump over to QGIS and start performing this NDVI calculation, I'm just going to take a minute to explain to you guys how these values can be interpreted depending on the condition of the plant that we're looking at. So right over here, just imagine that we are looking at a healthy plant which has green leaves, as you can see right over here. So when the near infrared light comes, a considerable fraction of that light is actually reflected off of these leaves if it's a healthy plant that has a higher chlorophyll content. And if you look at what happens to red light, well, the red light comes in, but you can see that just a small fraction of the red light is actually reflected back from this healthy plant, isn't it? So if you look at this equation, if you're looking at a healthy plant, you can see that this proportion, this near infrared proportion, is actually going to be quite high, and the amount that's reflected the amount of red light that's being reflected is actually going to be quite low so that alone makes the value of this ndvi to be rather high as you can see right over here according to these example values the calculated amount happens to be 0.72 which is a relatively high ndvi value as it's close to plus one now let's look at an alternative scenario well now we are looking at a plant that's relatively under stress compared to this first plant and the amount of near infrared that's being reflected, well, it's slightly lower than what we had originally over here. But look at what happens to visible red light. Just because of the low chlorophyll concentration in this, in this second plant, it's actually not capturing much of that red light as the first plant did. And it's reflecting back a significant proportion of this red light back, which is what the satellite captures. And if you look at the numbers and plug them into this equation, you can see that we get an NDVI value as low as 0.1. So there's a huge difference between these two values. And that alone tells us that one plant is doing significantly better in terms of its health compared to the other. And that's a very nice indication when it comes to being able to detect the health of the vegetation across a huge area, especially when you're looking at a satellite image. And we might not really be able to tell that if you're just looking at a raw natural color satellite image. And that's when making use of this kind of spectral bands can come in handy to make these kind of decisions. All right, I hope you guys got a good idea about the employment of these two different bands for the purpose of calculating NDVI and how 
NDVI values themselves vary depending on the amount of light, the amount of near infrared light and visible red light that's being reflected off of the plant depending on its condition. So now we'll jump into QJS and see this concept in action by actually making use of some satellite imagery. Now using the Earth Explorer web portal I have already downloaded a set of Landsat 9 images for a specific area of interest and, and uh, this is that sort of files. I have actually done a very comprehensive tutorial as I mentioned to you guys showing you the steps of downloading Landsat 9 imagery for basically anywhere on Earth completely for free using the USGS Earth Explorer web portal and you can follow this tutorial and get some Landsat images downloaded for yourself before we actually go forward into the next step and use QGIS to perform this uh, calculation. So I'm just going to assume that you guys have actually taken the time to follow this tutorial and download some Landsat images for yourself. And once you have done so, you can open up your QGIS workspace like this. Use the browser panel to browse into the folder where you have saved your Landsat images. And if you can recall the NDVI equation, we actually don't need all of these other bands, isn't it? What we need is just the band 5, which corresponds to the near-infrared wavelength range. So I'm just going to drag this and drop it over here. And I'm going to need band 4 as well, which correspond to the red band. And of course, when you drag this and uh, drop them into your QGIS workspace, they're just going to appear in black and white like this, which is totally fine. And we're going to perform that calculation on these raster images. And to do that, we are going to have to make use of a raster calculator. And I'm going to input uh, these two layers by selecting both of them and click OK. And as the expression, I'm just going to take a look at my original equation. And I realize that I first have to take band 5, which is this, double click, minus band 4, and I'm just going to wrap this in brackets like this, and we're going to divide this entire thing by, we'll open up a couple of brackets like this, band 5 plus band 4. And that's about it guys, just click OK. And we can just save this to a temporary file. Just click run and see what happens. It's going to take a couple of seconds to perform the calculation. And just like this, you get this calculated raster, which is nothing but the NDVI output, which, which is actually between plus one and minus one. The two extremes don't really have to be plus one and minus one, but you can see that it's within the plus one and minus one range and we don't really need these two images anymore because this is the one that, that we are going to work with uh, from now on. And guys you might realize that if you're using this kind of a color ramp which changes from black to white it might be kind of hard to interpret these uh, outputs correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click over here and go to properties and make sure that uh, I have opened up symbology right over here. And instead of single band gray, I'm going to use single band pseudo color. And from here, actually I could use this color ramp without any problem, but since we're dealing with vegetation related stuff, I would much rather use a color ramp which has some form of green in it. Maybe something like this, I think would be fine. And in terms of the interpolation, instead of linear, I'm going to select discrete. So right over here, you can see how the values are being sort of interpreted on this label side. And instead of having 0 0.01 over here, I'm going to sort of group all the negative values just in one color. So all the values that are less than zero, if I type zero right over here, is actually going to be represented in this kind of pink color and I think I'm going to get rid of these two levels so let's just select this and 
delete this and let's select this and delete this as well and everything from 0 up until 0 0.4 I'm going to represent them in this sort of light green color and everything that's more than 0 0.4 will be represented in this kind of dark green color. Well, I could even du double click over here and then make this a bit dark if I wish to do so like this. And when it comes to the precision, I don't really have to have four decimal points. Yeah, I think just one decimal point should be good enough. So all the negative values will be shown in pink color. Everything between 0 and 0.4 will be shown in this light green color and everything that's greater than 0.4 will be shown in this sort of dark green color. Click on apply and click on OK. And guys with that now you're very clearly able to see the differences isn't it? So this definitely seems to be a river that's running into or out from a reservoir right over here and there seems to be a water body right over here as well and if you try to interpret this well negative values typically tend to indicate the presence of things like water clouds or snow and in this case I can definitely see that uh, these are water bodies and if you're looking at values that are between 0 to 0.4 well they could actually be showing areas where little to no vegetation is present or as we saw from the previous example areas with vegetation that are relatively under stress and the value is greater than 0.4 we could attribute that to be vegetation that's thriving very green leafy vegetation as it shows uh, right over here now you might actually have a question how exactly did i define these thresholds well if you have some experience in working with the NDVI values you generally might have some idea about where these thresholds are supposed to be and it doesn't even have to be this kind of three classes you could you could even have four classes or five classes depending on what you're looking for and if you have the luxury of actually going out there into the field and sort of performing a cross validation just to kind of further verify this kind of uh, divisions then you probably would be able to end up getting a much more accurate NDVI figure. Alright guys, that actually brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope the steps were clear for you guys. If you do have any questions, you can always add a comment down below. If you like the tutorial, you can show your support by simply hitting that like button as well. And I'll see you guys again with another cool tutorial like this soon.